Good evening, church. Amen. I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I would like to thank the ladies for the song that they have just sung, which reminds us to believe on a, on a, on a hill called Mount Calvary. The whole week, um, our messages were focused on the cross. Today, we had um, a wonderful Lord's Supper. And I am still there talking about the Lord's Supper. Um, I'm still maintaining what others were saying. Our text of consideration is Mark 14, verse 22 to 26. It reads, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to, to them and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And they all drank of it, and he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. I assuredly I say to you, I will no longer drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Now that we have eaten, so what? That is the question that we are going to answer today. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Our dear Heavenly Father, I would like to thank you this evening for affording us this opportunity of worship. We come before you, dear Lord. Use me as never before. As we are going to share this word, we pray that it, it may find place in our hearts. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now that we have eaten the bread, so what, Church of God? Um, what are we expected to do? What is expected of us now that we have eaten the bread? Going back to the text that we have just read, we discover that Jesus is talking to his, is talking to his disciples. He is saving his disciples. He is doing service to his 12 disciples. Jesus gave his disciples bread and wine as a symbol of his death. He was showing them that his body was going to be broken. His body was going to be shared to everyone. We shall consider some characters from the, from the 12 disciples. We are just going to pick two characters from the, the, the 12 disciples. And the characters that we are going to pick are Judas and Peter. These two disciples, these two were both disciples. They were both followers of Jesus Christ. Both ate the Lord's Supper. Both somehow fell on the way. The two of them had a point where they denied Jesus. These two characters. Let us look at, the, at Judas. Uh, this one we'll read it when we, we go home. Uh, we are still on Mark uh, 14, verse 43 to 50. We'll read it when we get home. If we look at his history, it has a sad ending. If we look at uh, Judas' history, it has a sad ending. Um, if we read Desire of Ages, page 753, we discover that Judas had too much love of money, 
such that his love of money overbalanced his love for Jesus Christ. Uh, we are saying here, if we had to put money on this hand and put Jesus on this hand, Judas will run to where money is. That is how Judas loved money. He became a slave of one vice and gave himself to Satan to be driven in any length in sin. Let us remember that the Judas we are talking about is the Judas who walked with Jesus for some years. Um, Jesus shared the Lord's Supper with him. Um, the same Judas professed to be loving Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, what am I saying today? Some of us are going to betray Jesus just after this Lord's Supper. How are we going to deny Jesus? By the way we treat each other. Through our speech. By lying about others. Through our dress code. We can also root ourselves in money. That is one way of, of denying Jesus. There are so many of them. Um, I'm encouraging us today. Since we have taken the Lord's Supper, from one Lord's Supper to another Lord's Supper is a journey. There is a journey that we are going to walk. As we are going to walk this journey, I am encouraging each and every one of us who is here not to deny Jesus. Let us live a right with everyone. Let us live a right with Jesus Christ. Let us look at Peter. Peter denied Jesus. Uh, this one, we get it from the same chapter, Mark 14, verse 66 to 72. We are going to read it also when we get home. Um, Peter denied Jesus. That was not he, the, the end of his life. Uh, if we read verse 72, it says... When he came back to his senses, he wept bitterly. Um, these people, Peter, Peter was told, Jesus told him that you are going to deny me. But he denied it before Jesus. He said, no, that I cannot do. But when the, when the time came, he denied Jesus. When he looked at Jesus, He saw the face of Jesus, the loving face of Jesus, and he remembered, he remembered everything that Jesus had told him. The Bible says he wept bitterly. He prayed about it. He allowed the Holy Spirit to come into him and talk to him. His ending was a good one. When we talked about Judas, we said his, his history has a bad ending. But in this case, I'm saying to us today, uh, as I said, from one Lord's Supper to another, to another, it's a journey. I'm saying to us today, as we travel through this journey of life, after taking the Lord's Supper, it will not be easy. Sometimes we'll feel like denying Jesus because of the situations that we'll be going through. Sometimes we'll feel like letting it go some will fall and sleep in their falling, but some will fall and bounce back to their creator. I am saying to us today, we need to seek the face of Jesus. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, such that when we fall, we are able to bounce back to Jesus. Um, may the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed on the cross, Strengthen us so that we are able to stand if we meet challenges on our way. Paul once said, we are hard-pressed, 
but we are not crushed. On this road, we will be hard pressed, but we are not going to be crushed because we are covered by the blood of Jesus. Today we took a stand and we came here. We sat here. We took the symbol of the, of, of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. May that blood cover us all. Um, because of Jesus' uh, blood, I'm saying we are all covered. Someone once said, I buy a phone cover not to prevent it from falling, but to protect it from crashing when it falls. We are all covered in Jesus' blood. When we fall, we are not going to crash because we are safe in his hands. Um, just like the Israelites, they ate bread with gated loins in Egypt to show that they were to take a long journey and they were, they were to take a serious journey. In our cultures, when we are to travel, I think mothers, you agree with me, when your husband is traveling, is going to take a long journey, what do you do? You wake up early and prepare a special meal for him and make sure that his stomach is full so that he manages the journey. So I'm saying, my dear brothers and sisters, we cannot travel on an empty stomach. We have eaten the emblem. We are supposed to read the word of God as we are traveling so that we are strengthened, so that we have that power, so that we, our stomachs are full, so that we don't fall on the way. The same Israelites faced hardships on the way as they were traveling. In some places, they were not allowed to cross. They faced some wars with other nations, but they pressed on to the mark. They endured, they endured for the sake of the promise because they knew that he who had promised was going to fulfill the promise. Same applies to us today. Now that we have eaten, let us walk with the walk of faith. Let us endure for the sake of the promise, which says, until that day when I shall drink it anew in the kingdom of heaven. I'm encouraging us today, now that we have eaten the, the bread, now that we have taken the blood of Jesus, may this blood help us to endure the temptations that we are going to meet from this um, Lord's Supper to another Lord's Supper. If it means taking it anew in the new heaven, let us do so. I'm encouraging us to stay at the foot of the cross so that we are strengthened always. Those who will fall, please bounce back to your creator. His hands are wide open and those hands are able to carry us through. The ladies sang a song that I like so much. The song that brings us to the foot of the cross. The songwriter says, let me read it in your hearing. I would read the, 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 I would read the second stanza. It says, I believe that the Christ who was nailed to the cross has the power to change lives today. For he changed me completely. A new life is mine. That is why by the cross I will stay. Peter was changed on the cross. His life was changed completely, completely for the best. Let us stay at the cross so that our lives are changed completely. Let us stay at the cross so that the blood of Jesus covers us. Let us not, like, let us not be like Judas who wept and hung himself. Let us be like Peter who wept and cried and asked Jesus to forgive him of his sins. 
As we are going to travel this journey, it's not going to be easy. We are going to face some hardships. Some of you will be leaving Solusi very soon. Some are writing their final exam. Some are going to put their last full stop to their degrees. We may not meet because this world has all those difficult things. Some will die on the way, like what happened to the Israelites. Some will suffer on the way. But what I'm praying for is that let us have the spirit of, uh, of Peter, who when he faced that predicament, he remembered the one who had promised. He remembered the one who had told him that this one we are going to do. And he asked for forgiveness. My dear brothers and sisters, in conclusion, I'm saying, now that we have eaten, let us walk aright before God. Let us surrender ourselves before God. Let us surrender our lives in, in the hands of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless us. Amen.